this was a dead uh, Honeywell branded uh, typical Chicon helicraft. This neighbor had this in uh, one of those little uh, track light can type fixtures, which you're not supposed to use them in. And uh, it overheated and died, so I got it. You can see that the printed circuit board, which actually looks like a um, fiber composite material, it's a mixture of the um, of the uh, fiberglass and uh, paper, so it's a bit better than the typical paper only that kind of crap material that you'll find in lots of consumer electronics nowadays. But not by much. Fr still Fr4 is still much better. Typical fiberglass. And inside there aren't any exploded components that I can see, which is somewhat unusual, although the adhesive that was used to hold the lamp in, instead of being its normal white off white, it's a uh, dark brown. So, yeah. That was a little positive temperature coefficient device. Since this thing, when it worked, was a um, program start lamp. And what happens is that is a very low resistance when the lamp is cold, so it effectively shorts out the ballast through the two uh, lamp electrodes. And that's why some lamps will glow at the ends for a few seconds before starting up. It's a bit better than the uh, uh, instant start that lots of lamps use because that really ablates off the, uh, em the emissive material on the electrodes. But lots of people want instant light because these things are being confl conflated with the incande with the incandescent lamps and all these games that are trying to be used that are uh, that are being done to try and make these kind of sort of ish uh, like um, incandescent lamps and their functionality when they're not and they're niche products and they shouldn't be used in a whole lot of applications where they're being used in. <coughs> but oh, and the uh, MTC, what that, or the PTC, what that does is after lamp current, whereas after the, um, the current through it heats it up and its resistance increases by a great deal and then the um, a potential across the lamp goes, rises to such an extent where the where lamp strikes and lights. And the, and the current through it keeps its temperature high enough so that its resistance is high enough that it doesn't really have much of an effect on the lamp in operation. Then there's a couple of these um, uh, plastic foam, possibly polyester, but uh, caps right there, that little brown one. And there's two others, there's that one. And then that and that one. So there's three of these somewhat high potential. They're 1,200 volts, 1,500 volts, depending. And somewhat unusual is that this one is a 4 nanofarad capacitor. Somewhat unusual is normally there are a series of a, a set of stepped values. So that's somewhat unusual because that isn't on the set of stepped. It's um, preferred numbers. It's a uh, fairly common on um, electronic components. That's why resistors are go from like 2,200 ohms, 2,400 ohms, 2,700 ohms, 3,000 ohms, 3,300 ohms, etc. So that with the 5% tolerance of the resistor, or in these case, these are, I think, 10% tolerance caps. Uh, that way, with the 5% tolerance on either side of that, uh, you, in theory, have every single possible resistance that can be covered and um, but anyways so interestingly enough the capacitor isn't bulged but I'd imagine that from the high operating temperatures that it's been in it's probably not in the best way it says it's good for negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 221 degrees Fahrenheit on it but considering it's some Chinese crap no name that is uh, a suspect to say the least and there's a little main transformer and a little toroid down there, which is the um, 
uh, uh, feedback trans uh, transformer for the uh, transistor bases, which are of course not heat sinked and uh, kind of a bit dubious. But then again, uh, there's your standard wing oscillator topology. It's really crappy. It does actually have a QRM for um, a limiting pull, uh, choke there, which probably also is minimal in rush current limiting, but uh, still wouldn't trust it all that much. And proper QRM filtering covers both leads. Then, of course, your typical um, fusible resistor instead of a fuse. So, another thing to cook off. And, uh, yeah, and the, the base of this thing is fairly heavily yellow, uh, the uh, bit of the plastic closest to the lamp is fairly heavily yellow from the combination of heat and uh, ultraviolet exposure. Although I actually had one that I pulled out of a neighbor's that I don't currently have that was in a recessed can in their bathroom and the entire base was brown. And of course, the place that makes everything we love to eat. Yeah, piece of crap. And now, because finals are over, let's see what happens when you expose one of these to only about 25 times or so. It's rated operating potential. Warning. The following experiment involves very high potentials and a very, very, very high likelihood of fatal electrocution if anything goes wrong. Do not, under any circumstances, attempt it at home, ever. Don't do it. This is a 3,000 volt microwave oven transformer. Yes, it is a it is a 3,000 volt microwave oven transformer, even though they're typically uh, uh, 2,000 volts to 2,400 volts. This is um 10,000 volt rated cable connecting the secondary of it, the much thinner stuff is just the ground, to the victim in my blast chamber, which is, in typical fashion, a garbage can with a piece of plexiglass on top of it. And the garbage can and the second, uh, and the, and the, um, this side are at ground potential because, uh, stuff. But, there's the victim. <coughs> My third time's a charm, not gonna look, come on, away. Away. Victim's been reset. Go. Victim shorted. Finally, we get booby stuff! Yay! Ha ah, ah, ha ah. And Funky Gunji, yeah. Alright, it's dead. This is the aftermath of the popping. They can see that one of the capacitors has just turned to this blob of metal and burn. A uh, bunch of the components are actually just covered in uh, soot, not actually physically, uh, but not actually um, damaged in any way, because pretty much it just arc flashed over through that cap and through that side of the PCB. And... Uh, so yeah, it delaminated this side of the board pretty good before the whole thing just shorted. And um, but just remember, it doesn't take 3,000 volts to do it. Yes, I did use 3,000 volts uh, on this particular example, but you can easily have boards fail in this manner from regular mains potential. So yeah, these things are pretty dangerous and. Yeah, but still a good pop, especially considering the bloody thing deserved it.